I'm here at Chapel Off Chapel to see a new show called She Swallowed That Lie. It's by Somebody's Daughter Theatre Company, which got its start in the early 80s running arts programs in a women's prison. Now I have to tell you, I am so excited to see the cast work their magic on stage after coming along and checking out one of their rehearsals during the week. Is she in there? I can't see. But for now, let's go have a chat with co-artistic director, Karen Harper. No, I can't. Good. Can you explain to us a little bit of the story behind the name Somebody's Daughter? Somebody's Daughter began in the women's prison, Fairly Women's Prison in 1980. There was a woman that had been performing. She got out and she said, look, could we do something on the outside? And that's how Somebody's Daughter Theatre was officially born. Because in the end, we, are all just somebody's daughter. We're all just humans trying to find our way. Well, I think that's important to find a sense of belonging We you're not going to be judged. That's the thing, it's suspending any judgment, it's parked at the door. So can you please tell us briefly about the story of She Swallowed That Lie? She swallowed that lie is really the lies that we tell ourselves in order to survive. Growing up when you're growing up rough or with trauma, when you want to possibly not tell DHHS that this is what's going on at home, the lies we tell ourselves when we're in a relationship that really isn't serving us well, the lies a system might possibly tell us, like that redemption is granted by society. So it's about busting through those lies. I'm trying not to become bitter, but it's a lie that redemption is granted once your sentence ends. I'm wondering, do you write stories initially with the actual story in mind or the actor? Namilla, we never start with the story in mind. People bring their truth, and there's a bucket load of truth in this cast. They do their own writings, and it grows and evolves. Well, I just feel stuffy, and I don't know how to get out of the situation mm. that I'm in. I pretty much started when I was an audience member, and I saw a show inside the prison as a prisoner, um, and it just it really took my breath away. I thought, you know what, I want to be a part of this. Exactly. But to be able to make that decision, you need self-confidence, you need self-esteem, and that's what somebody's daughter gave me. I am good enough. I am something more than a prisoner or all these other labels. What really struck you as you were watching the performance? Well, there's a lot of humour in there. And there's, it's, there's a lot of prison humour in there as well. But there's also the heartfelt stories that all of the women can relate to. We've all been through trauma. It's very rare for a woman in prison that's had stability in their life something's happened for them to end up there. Yeah, it was very touching. Can you explain to me a bit about the character or role that you're taking in She Swallowed That Lie? Phoenix is ready for parole, ready to go, and a setback happens. I'm so sorry, Phoenix, but the parole board have decided not to review you for another six months. Six months? What? Why? They said they had concerns about your behaviour towards the women and staff. Does she go back to her old habits? Does she lose it and get angry? Or does she just keep punching through and just take it on board? What are the unique insights that you're able to bring to evolving this character of Phoenix? I'm telling my own truth. I haven't just evolved in my character, I've evolved in myself. Is there anything you wish to say? No. Yeah, I'm so over that scene. But it's way too late. Had a five to eight. Become my face. I want to build compassion. I want to build empathy. I want to build understanding that we prisoners, we're human too. I learn things about people. I take notice of the way they look at me. The way they pretend not to stare. The first somebody's order production that I saw was a prison play at Dame Phyllis Frost. And I saw that as an audience member, and that was when I first started working with somebody's daughter. What was it about that show that really grabbed you? I think just the courage and the bravery it took for the women in there to get up on stage in front of mere strangers and tell their story, to tell their truth in a way that was so 
moving and the vulnerability that they showed and the effect that had on me was just, I need to get involved with this theatre company in whatever way, shape or form. Tell me about developing the character of Alec. Alec's journey, for example, sort of mirrors my own. I've been in Australia since I was six. There are so many different types of racism. Each and every time it affects me differently. I have different ways of dealing with it. And some days I don't know how to move forward. Do you mind if I just look in your bag? My bag? Yeah, yeah, protocol. You didn't check anyone else's bag. There's no need to get aggressive, just remain calm. Alec goes through the same thing and building this character who's so much like me, you know, it sort of helps me grapple with whatever I'm going through. What's it like for you as a writer mm -hmm. trying to capture that in this play? I've always thought of words as, you know, my friends. So it's always a way to help me see what's often unseen. She's got a heart of gold and it's categorised. She's one of them, she's one of them, she's one of them. At the start, um, it was way out of my comfort zone, but you know the company that I work with are so good at not only making you feel at ease with the process, but they make you feel at ease with being yourself. But also the stories that we're telling are so important.